Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom where a sovereign citizen is attempting to be a lawyer. And, well, it appears that he fails stupendously. In fact, it is better to watch this video in its full length because you will get a better understanding of how stupid this guy truly is. For, for he has definitely uh, drank the Sovereign Citizen Kool-Aid. And the judge really puts him in his place as a result of his stupidity. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Uh, I am the living man. It's uh, been, I'm not a man. Yeah, yeah, that flawed old argument about uh, separating the living from the corporate, blah, blah, blah. You know that's a load of BS anyway. I mean, come on, dingbat, try something new that hasn't been debunked countless damn times. I'm living known by the name of that. Uh, sure. So, uh, listen, for purposes of communicating with you, I'm going to call you Mr. Martin. I can clearly see that you are a living man because you're talking. Most most dead men don't talk. <laughs> so, um, there's a, you know, there's Mr. Martin, this is case 231510OT, people of the city of Taylor versus Eric Martin. Today's the date and time set for your motion for return of moped and also a motion for to dismiss uh, the, the cases. This is your motion, sir. Go ahead. Have you read the motion already? Yeah, I've read the motion. I'm just asking you, are you standing on, uh, are you just going to stand on the motion that you filed, which is fine. You can do that. I was giving you the opportunity to um, make oral argument if you wanted to. Right. Well, just, uh, um, first, I want to say on the so-called charge against me, I am, enter I am entering a special appearance. Um, okay, that is in no way a general jurisdictional granting appearance. Um, I challenge the jurisdiction of this court. Let me guess, you think that this is an admiralty court, right? Or something like that? Therefore, uh, seeing as how you think it's an admiralty court, that you're a land lover, that they, they have no jurisdiction over you. Well, this is not an admiralty court, dude. You would be sadly mistaken if that's what you were thinking, which is what a lot of soft tarts tend to think anyway. Uh, there's a contract that I have knowingly, willingly, and voluntarily entered into with this court that grants any jurisdictional authority over me as a living man. Um, if there's any such contract with the court, I uh, demand the court present it. Um, also, want to say I'm here by threatened arrest. I'm not here willingly. Um, you know, like I said, threatened arrest is the normal. If you don't show up, arrest warrant, etc. Um, now, in response to uh, what to say about the motion. Um, well, as again, um, as a recap. Um, okay, my motions are all based on my um. Yeah, and the reason first I want to point out the reason I don't like I don't like using the word motion because I know that tradition you know, I use the word demand um because it's is based on the constitution, right? You know, on my human rights. So how I've been taught in the law, these are the words I like to use. If I use the word request motion, you know, that's not right because you request privileges, you know what I mean, you demand rights. That's how I've been taught. So that's how I learned. Well, dude, uh, what you are taught and what reality is are two entirely different things at this point because, well, apparently you were definitely taught the wrong way of doing things. And, well, that much is clear by uh, how you uh, govern yourself in this particular uh, setting right here. So, yeah. I just want to say that, you know, so, you know, I don't want you to think, take it personal or nothing like that. Hopefully, you know, it just... And my right, but uh, aren't you thinking, you know, hey, I'm the judge here, you know, who are you to demand? But it's demanded rights, but anyway, so again, it's based on my right to private property, my due process, 
in the due process of the Michigan Constitution. No state law that they are trying to use, have wrote up about it, justified by my constitution. And the do is try to use state statute, unconstitutional state statute law. But that doesn't justify the private, my private property. Why it didn't justify depriving me of it then and not continuing to deprive me of it now. I do not need to pay no money for it back from the towing place. But again, that's based on my constitutional and human and God given rights to enjoy my private property. Well, dude, uh, there is this thing called the Tenth Amendment that you uh, seem to fail to realize that grants the states the right to create the laws that are not covered in the Constitution. Because, you know, the uh, Founding Fathers sure as hell couldn't cover every particular thing that would uh, pop up in uh, the future nation that they would create. I mean, did you ever bother to think about that? No, you're too busy uh, drinking the Sovtard Kool-Aid, dude. Now, of course, this guy goes rambling on for a good 40 minutes about this, so I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm going to, at some point, fast forward to what the judge has to say, and it is pretty much an epic smackdown on the flawed reasoning of this particular Sovtard. So at some point, we will skip ahead. Um, you know, um, and there's no injured party now in the case. I want to mention that too, so... The plaintiff has no standing against these so-called criminal charges. Um, there's no standing because there's no injured party. And I have a U.S. Supreme Court case on that, so I'll move to dismiss the case on that. Um, in addition, that which also supports why it should be given it back, they have no because as the uh, you know, standing is a necessary. This is word for word from the U.S. Supreme Court case uh, called Ramey's. I may not be pronouncing it right. It's spelled R A M E S versus Bird, B e R Y D, uh, 521 U.S. Uh, 211. Standing is a necessary component of subject matter jurisdiction. Then we go to another case. The requirement of standing, however, has a core component derived directly from the Constitution. A plaintiff must allege personal injury barely traceable to the defendant's allegedly unlawful conduct. Okay, uh, and likely to be redressed by the requested relief. That's a, another U.S. Supreme Court case, Allen versus Wright. 468 U.S. reports, uh, pages 737 and 751, decided in 1984. So again, that's, you know, uh, 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 personal injury required by the plaintiff. There's no injured party. Well, I've had enough of the verbal diarrhea coming out of this soft hard's mouth because a lot of what he spews out is just quote mind BS that you hear all the time from sovereign citizens. So let's just go ahead and skip to the end of this uh, uh, session right here. That way we can hear what the judge really has to say to this soft hard, and it is pretty hilarious at that. Many, many minutes later. That is, and they try to charge money again. Again, it's, it's a big mon monetary thing, you know. They're trying to turn rights into privileges, charging money, 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 well, and I don't have money for that. It's not about charging money, money, money. When I go to the store, I don't just get to walk out with bread. I mean, I got to pay for the bread because somebody made the bread. So somebody has to, somebody has to type a transcript. So. Well, this is also on YouTube, so for all my YouTube watchers out there, hey, how you doing? God bless America. You can also watch a copy of YouTube. It's supposed to be deleted by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, but God knows it won't be because it's my cases. So you'll be able to watch it probably for as long as you ever want to. So you well, can see it again. Well, I'll make sure I check it out. But anyways, I still want to finish. Uh, let me uh, finish what I have to say. Let me respond to uh, what else you said now. You may have a right to travel but we don't have a right to drive a motor vehicle. Okay, now, on the terminology, travel by right and drive a motor vehicle is not the same. And I can be controlling my moped, okay? I can be controlling a motorcycle by right. 
It's not if I only walk. Or didn't say that. Traveling by right is, means as long as I am not um, carrying passengers or property for pro profit. Now, I'm doing that in my private vehicle, which what I was doing. I wasn't working for DoorDash. There's no evidence. I wasn't working as a taxi driver doing nothing else. I was therefore traveling by right. If I was in a car, same thing. If I am not carrying passenger property for profit, I it's am incorrect. not. Motivated. You're incorrect. I'm just telling you, you're incorrect. You're incorrect. I've, I've taught constitutional law for uh, almost oh. 20 years. You're incorrect. You don't have a right. You don't. You do not have a right to travel by any means you choose. <laughs> so that's yeah, a place I'm going to go. I'm going to go buy myself a helicopter. And I'm going to fly to work every day. No license helicopter, and then I'll just call myself an Uber helicopter. I'm sure everybody would like to show up at the parties in a helicopter. You can't do it. You have to have a license to drive because it's a dangerous activity. You can walk anywhere you want to. You do, I agree. You have a right to travel, but it's not by any means you choose. Obviously the right to travel means it doesn't matter how a human cannot dictate who you can Sir, I have other cases to get I have other cases to get to. So um I'm not trying to cut you off, but if you want to file a motion for reconsideration, you're more than welcome to do so. Well, you are well, you are coming so much short because I still want to talk. I have the first amendment right to speak and I Continue. You do have a First Amendment. Again, there you go again. A First Amendment right. A First Amendment right to speak doesn't mean you have a First Amendment right to speak. It means that you have a First Amendment right not to have the government interfere with your right to speak. That means right. that if you want to go stand on in some, in someone's sidewalk and give a speech or hold a sign, you can do that. The government can't stop you from doing that. But if you want to walk around naked, the government can stop you from doing that, even if you call it free speech. Why? Because it's indecent. Well, there's rules to there's rules to everything. Everyone everyone says, well, I have a right to say what I want to." No, you don't. Not in, not in a private situation. So, like, if you're at someone's house and you're talking about whatever, there's like, "Hey, stop that!" And you're like, "Well, I have a right to I have a right to say what I want to." No, you don't. Not against private citizens. See, everyone just misabuses and throws that word out so quick that they don't even know what they're talking about. It's kind of like right to travel. But anyway, um, if you have a motion to for reconsideration, the court will review that and set that for a hearing. But I've made, my, I've made my determination uh, today with regard to your motions, okay? So basically, actions have consequences and words have their consequences depending on the context. If you talk about the government, yeah, sure, that is protected speech. But if you walk up to somebody in a private setting and uh, talk about them in a negative light, then you're liable to get some consequences out of those words that you spoke because nothing really comes for free, as the judge said earlier. I mean, it's just that it just doesn't really work that way i mean you could even lose your job because of what you said and uh believe me i've seen people lose their jobs for what they've said on facebook or anything like that in a uh, retail setting so yeah you might want to be careful with that kind of thing oh yeah and soft heart you might want to do a little bit more research on what the laws actually are versus what the constitution says because the con like i said the constitution doesn't exactly cover everything so yeah if you were really a student of the Constitution, you would understand that. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.